Hey guys, we're at uh, 10 Mile River Preserve, uh, right outside of uh, New York City, mm -hmm. about an hour outside of New York City. We've been here for a couple of days to present to uh, select group of riders the new DT11. We're joined by a special guest, Will Fennell. Uh, Will has a long history of uh, knowing how to shoot guns. Tell us a little bit of the uh, achievements and the accolades. Well, one of the things that's neat about this gun for me is I was uh, involved early on with the DT-10, which is the predecessor. Been shooting DT-10 since 1999. Uh, and since then, become an 11-time member of Team USA, always with the DT-10. This gun's kind of a follow-on product improvement, is what it seems like to me, of uh, the 10. Uh, a lot of the best attributes are retained. The dropout trigger, the, e the durability, the handling of the gun, the ease of long-term maintenance. My gun's got a little over a million rounds through it. It's easy to maintain, uh, to rebuild the gun as needed. But the cool thing about the 10, about the 11, that, um, that I'm really impressed with is the barrel technology. Uh, Fitas is my main game. It's a long-range clay target game. Most clay target games are played in inside 20, 30 yards. Fitas is not uncommon for us to shoot 50, 60, 70 yard targets. Things get dicey out there. We need all the pattern performance we can get out of the shell. So let me stop you right here because some people, when you say pattern performance, sure. may not know what that is. And, okay. and earlier when we were chatting, you made an analogy to me as a layman when it comes to clay target shooting that made sense. Sure. So you, you said when you go out, what happens to the pellets when, when the clay's out there? The, the pattern, the shotgun pattern, spreads at a steady rate of progression. Okay. So if it's a relatively good size pattern at 20 yards, it's really big at 40 and it's too damn big at, at 60. We're starting, we have, an, we have a finite number of pellets. As they spread out, there begin to be holes in the pattern. So what we like to do is keep all of the pellets as much together as we can. So at distance, there's no holes in the pattern, so the target can't get through. What causes pellets to fly off away from the pattern is pellet, is pellet deformation. Most conventional shotgun bores, there's the chamber, and there's an area called the forcing cone, where chamber diameter narrows down to the bore diameter, then it goes along down the rest of the barrel and gets to the choke and it narrows down some more. What Beretta has figured out how to do is make that transition smoother. Instead of a couple inch forcing cone, the barrel tapers from the end of the chamber all the way to the choke. And that is an amazing, amazing quality. Very difficult to do, but I just figured out how to do it in production instead of an aftermarket kind of process. Um, and it keeps the pellets from getting mangled, from getting smashed together as they go down the barrel. So I want to make sure that I understand what you're saying is in traditional guns, the, the difference between the chamber diameter and the muzzle diameter is like a big step. It's, a, it's in one or more steps. So when the, so when the gun explodes, when the cartridge goes off, Shot goes barreling out of the out of the cartridge. Boom! It hits this wall. Recoil impulse is then transmitted back to the breech face, and we feel a lot of recoil. With this long tapered barrel, it's more of all of the energy going out the end of the barrel. We don't get the big smash back in the shoulder. Changes the recoil impulse entirely. Also, very importantly, it keeps those pellets from getting kind of smashed together. So you get more round pellets exiting the bore. They stay in the pattern. I have fired the uh, extensive testing since I got my DT-11, comparing it to other guns at 50 and 60 yard patterns. Most people just shoot patterns at 16 yards, 20 yards. Everything works at that distance. In the games that I play where we shoot long range targets, we look at 50 yard patterns, 40 yard patterns, 60 yard patterns. I get the best long range patterns I've ever shot in my life out of this gun. It's amazing. And the recoil impulse is significantly less. Because there are not there are these little the stuff. shoulders that it smashes into. So it lets me practice more, shoot less fatigue, and have better performance down range. It's an, it's an amazing quality. They've kept the good handling of the DT-10. We've had a little more mass to the middle of the gun, which allows us to have weight between the hands without a bunch of burden on the end of the barrel. 
So let's talk about that for a second. Um, often we hear comments like, well, my such and such shotgun, which cost thousand dollars instead of thousands of dollars, bursts the clay just the same. He powders the clay just the same. Uh, so what is it? Is it the wood that makes it more expensive? Is it that uh, you know you've got oil rubbed finish that makes it more expensive? These are all nice things, what, what and, we, and we appreciate them for but, sure. But, but what does balance do for an Olympic shooter or a world champion? It allows us to move the gun to and from the clay with much more control when the gun is out of balance. And errors at 20 yards don't show up near like errors at 50 yards. At 50 yards, if my gun's a quarter inch out of place at the end of the muzzle, I'm going to miss. At 20 yards, if it's a quarter out of place out of the muzzle, I'm shooting a big wide open choke. I'm still probably going to hit it. It'll be okay. Uh, the games that are played at closer ranges can get away with that. The games that are played at longer ranges can't. And at the higher levels of competition, we, we need all we can get. Um, well, one thing that I heard is about this. Um, the receiver that's a little wider, it's three millimeter wider. Mm -hmm. uh, what they've side. done here, if you can see on camera, is the DT-10 was this width all the way through the receiver. In the 11, they've opened the width up to this width, the back of the receiver, which allowed us to place a little more weight in the middle of the gun between your hands, so the hands still work in concert. It doesn't burden the balance of the gun, it still places a little more weight in the middle. Helps control recoil, helps give us a different moment of inertia with the gun, and uh, really makes for a good handling gun. It's pretty cool. So we talked about the barrels. We talked about the, uh, the uh, internal uh, ge geometry of the barrel. Uh, we've talked about the receiver. What about the locking system? Locking system is pure DT-10, which comes from the SO system guns. It's a um, Kirsten Crossbolt lockup. Extremely strong because the lockup is above the axis of the bullet. When the gun goes off, forces of recoil are trying to open the gun. When the lockup system is above the center line of the bore, it makes for a stronger lockup system. Okay. Okay? That's also one of the cool things about the DT system is the gun has a couple of significant parts that we have built in for user adjustable wear. There's three sizes of the locking bar, there's three sizes of the hinge pins. It's a gun that when you get a quarter main rounds to it, you can stop in at your brother gunsmith. He can rebuild the gun for a minor amount of money, have you back out on the course shooting in a few hours, total rebuild of the gun without refinishing, without some of the stuff that you have to get through with other guns. And, you know, just kind of recap for those of us that aren't real familiar with the DT series gun, DT stands for detachable trigger. Um, when you travel and shoot overseas or you travel around the country, and there's not always gunsmith that you shoot. Every gun has little small springs and things that could potentially go wrong. The cool thing about the DT-10 is we have a user detachable trigger group. Done. That's it. That's it. So when I travel to a world championship, I have a spare one of these in my bag. I go to the <laughs> kitchen. I go to the kitchen I get the food saver, a vacuum sealer, throw it in my range bag. And since 1999, I've needed my spare trigger group twice. So this is both times camping. were in World Championship shootoffs. Both times I retrieved my spare trigger group and won the shootoff. <laughs> so this is this is similar to having a race car with a detachable engine. Exactly. And that's the whole program right there. Now, how many uh, rounds do you fire through a gun every mm, year on average? I don't shoot as much now as I did as I came up through the ranks, but I shoot 40, 45,000 rounds a year. And how many people come through your school to learn? Thousands. Thousands. Okay. Um, so we've learned today what makes a $1,000 shotgun become an $8,000, $9,000, $10,000 uh, 